Chapter 15, question 15. For a two-tailed test with an alpha of 0.05, use table B6 to determine how large a Pearson correlation is necessary to be statistically significant for each of the following samples. So, we've got a two-tailed test, alpha of 0.05, and what we need to do is we're going, so question A gives us, we're given sample sizes. And so this question is really about practice calculating your degrees of freedom and practice using the table in the back of the book, um, which I think everybody needs some practice, making sure that they're right, reading from the right column. So the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 2. So question A, the n is 6. So 6 minus 2, our degrees of freedom is 4. So from there, we go to the back of the book. I'm going to pull that over. We're going to get practice looking at it. So the critical values for the Pearson correlation. If you're using a different book, it might not be table B6, but this is the, the table that we want. So, level of significance for a one-tailed test. No, we've got a two-tailed test. We wanted an alpha of 0.05, so we're going to be looking in this column. And we had a degrees of freedom of 4. So, the value that we need to get is R is plus or minus 8.811. So, the critical R is plus or minus 0.811. Question B, the N is 12, so the degrees of freedom, that's 12 minus 2, so the degrees of freedom are 10, and so again, two-tailed test, alpha of 0.05, so we're looking for our critical R, and what is it equal to? So again, we're going to use level of significance, two-tailed test, 0.05, now our degrees of freedom is 10, so we're going to go down to here. And that critical value is plus or minus 0 0.576. We need to be larger than 0 0.576, the absolute value of our, of our calculation. C, the N is 24. So our degrees of freedom, 24 subtract 2, our degrees of freedom is 22, and let's go look up what that critical R is going to be. And we only have the plus or minus because it's a two-tailed test. If it was a one-tailed test, then it wouldn't be plus or minus, it would be plus or minus, uh, one of them, not both of them. So if we look here, degrees of freedom 22, our alpha is still 0.05 with a two-tailed test. So now the critical value is 0 0.404. It's not part of the question, but let's take a look at what happens as our degrees of freedom increases from 4 to 10 to 22. What happens to our critical R? The value that we need to calculate, the value that we need to be larger than um, in order to be statistically significant gets smaller as our degrees of freedom increases.